This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. It used to be one of the most sought after fields with assured returns for anyone aspiring to be an engineer. But has the engineering bull run in India finally come to an end? Let's find out. For years, engineering has been one stream that has generated maximum buzz. Not just among students but also among their parents. Take Utkash for instance. He has just finished his final year in electronics and telecom engineering and is all geared up to bag a job in his chosen field. But does the story end there? While many students opt to study engineering, how many of them prefer to stay on in this field? After graduation, I have the required technical knowledge and also the skills which I have acquired through various activities. So I can do both. But my preferred choice will be MBA because MBA it gives me a role of techno-functional because e even after doing MBA, I can be in a technical field as well. Utkarsh isn't the only one looking to venture out into a completely different field despite having spent four years studying engineering. Over the last few years, engineering seems to have lost some of its sheen. As per reports, India is home to over 3,400 engineering colleges with over 17,60,000 students enrolled in them. But questions are now being raised on the quality of education in these colleges. According to a survey done with a sample of over 1.2 lakh engineering students from over 520 colleges across India, less than 20% of these students are employable. Regulatory authorities uh, like AICT, they would like to believe that uh, for them the numbers don't matter as long as a trust comes with a request and they fulfill the bare minimum requirement, uh, they are bound to give a permission to open an engineering colleges. Many trusts unfortunately looked at this as a business proposition rather than education. So these two actually uh, multiplied the number of engineering colleges in the country. More than 50% did not open with an intention of education. They opened with an intention of business. Frankly speaking, no harm. One can do business, but they have to mean education. It cannot be business at the cost of education. And unfortunately, that is what happened in all these majority institutions. And hence, we had engineers which were not employable. While few students still aspire to pursue their higher education in engineering, most have caught the entrepreneurship bug. Looking to start up their own company eventually, getting an MBA becomes one of the top priorities on their to-do list. Now I have a technical background, now I have a technical knowledge. If I could be in management resources, if I understand how to use my resources at the optimum level, then I think I'll be able to be a successful entrepreneur ahead or maybe I'll be able to manage the company I am uh, hired for. So there has to be a balance between the technical and the non-technical both. And I think after an engineering, an MBA will give me that perfect opportunity. And eventually when I have confidence in myself, I want to venture out in something, uh, become an entrepreneur. Because right now India is an emerging market. Any smart person can come here and dominate the market uh, with initiatives like Make in India by the government. There are lots of manufacturing sectors that are going to come up so we can provide automation services. <laughs> Colleges too are helping their students realize their aspirations by launching incubators to help them kickstart their dreams. We always say that instead of waiting for employer to come and get place or instead of searching for a job and wasting your time, you focus more on the product, develop your own product and start your own startup. And that idea we are implemented in our college. We are incubation center and before incubation center, Government has a lot of schemes. Government is giving fund to start an incubation centre. Government is giving a fund to start their own business. So that was a fact check on the scenario of engineering education in the graduate level in India. Lakshmi, can you throw us more light on the higher education perspective? What's the scene there? Well, Ankita, from what I've heard, there's definitely room for a lot of improvement. Here's a look at the current state. 
In fact, one of the telltale signs of higher education in engineering gone wrong in the country is the number of students opting to study engineering abroad. According to a study by the U.S. Student and Exchange Visitor Program, a whopping 70% of international students studying engineering in the country are from India. The share of engineering students in higher education in the country is about 10% as compared to China's 14%. India also has the lowest number of engineering students opting for a PhD at less than 1%, which is the lowest among the BRIC nations as well as the US and UK. India also falls short when it comes to master's degree in engineering as well, with just 5.4% of students opting to take up the courses in the country itself. But is this flight to the countries abroad for engineering purely about quality? Everybody is a competitor. Your friend is a competitor. The person who was sitting next to me on the bench is my competitor, you know. And there's a highly disproportionate demand-supply ratio which puts immense pressure on the engineering student. So obviously, you know, the first thing that they look to is, can I go abroad? You know, can I get something, you know, in terms of a, either an M.Tech or a Ph.D., uh, you know, which will make me stand out either to remain abroad and get a job or to come back armed and equipped to get straight away aim for the top job. The other thing is what I've consistently seen is that confusion about career choices among Indian, Indian engineering students. Uh, you know, uh, that is the over-dependence on theoretical learning. We do not have a robust mentoring culture in India and the com market is hyper-competitive. Com so where do the students go? You know, what, in, what happens finally is that engineering students after four years eight semesters and a huge amount of money put in as tuition fees end up as sales, marketing and HR professionals, which is not good for India, you know. And add to this, Indian engineering students are not really going in to take up M.Tech or PhD. So that further creates pressure on research and a culture of innovation for India. Another factor to be taken into account is also the quality of teaching faculty for engineering in India, with most teachers lacking industry experience. The government of India has prescribed that the minimum qualification required for a person to teach engineering at a college is a master's degree. Work experience is not mandatory. Experts say that the low entry barriers are to blame. So what is the future of engineering education in India? Accreditation is another piece because accreditation for engineering colleges is not mandatory in India. It is something that the government encourages you to do. And we have just signed the Washington Accord which puts us in a league of other uh, accredited uh, for big engineering or, uh, countries which have large, large engineering programs. However, still now, you are required to have accreditation for funding. That is what is encouraged, but it's not mandatory. And therefore, there is no benchmarking against the world that we are doing for our engineering institutions itself. As if you have attended any of the lectures uh, abroad, if you see that, again, the key is that you are always talking about how to apply versus looking at what's there in the book and memorizing what's there in the book. And that's the key difference. If we are able to solve that and put a quality benchmark for it on our engineers, the engineering in India has got huge future. And I'll tell you why, because we are producing the largest numbers of engineers in the world. World over, people are not taking up engineering as a career. But the need for engineers are not going to go away. So therefore, if we are able to manage to create, if we manage to create world-class engineers here, then we'll soon be supplying the engineers to the world. So, but we have to get our quality and our application uh, quotient right in this equation. And once we do that, then we, we will probably be the set of people who supply engineers to the rest of the world. Well, engineering is still definitely the stream to be betting on. But according to experts, if the quality of education doesn't improve, Indian engineers may not always be top pick. Up next, I speak to the good folks from the RB College of Engineering.